Welcome to Bedrock Bookkeepers Online Academy for another awesome segment. My name is Joe DeChara, again, inviting you to our site, bedrockbookkeeping.com. We are constantly updating our content, our videos, our courses, all for you, the student that wants to learn about bookkeeping and the business of bookkeeping. Again, that's Bedrock bookkeeping.com and we welcome your feedback and suggestions anything that can help us improve your experience with us enjoy the next segment thank you chapter six awesome paperless file systems i'm going to show you how to turn this mess into this pretty neat isn't it now, in the Bedrock Bookkeeper's paperless file system, there's only three steps. Number one is saving your file in the proper format. Number two is creating a logical naming convention. And number three is saving your file in the cloud for remote access. Now, remember, I said this is the Bedrock Bookkeeper's paperless file system. And what I mean by that is we save everything in the cloud. We need to have remote access in order for our system to work. Now, the naming format is the last three letters that you see at the end of any file extension. And the most popular format for paperless systems is the PDF format, portable document format, and XPS, which is the Microsoft format, and I have no idea really what XPS stands for. All I know is that it's an alternative to the PDF format, and, I, and I'll give you an example of why and when we would use that as opposed to the PDF format. So, you have two options when converting your file. Now just keep in mind that many files are already in electronic format and su such as Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, anything that you already have on your computer. So sometimes what we're talking about here is simply scanning your documents into an electronic format. Now, if your file is already in electronic format, but you want to convert it to, let's say, a PDF format, you have two options on how to do that. Number one is print it the same way you would print any document. So over here you see my print dialog box. And one of the options is Adobe PDF. And the other option is XPS. Now, you don't always have Adobe as an option because I ha happen to have the premium Adobe Acrobat software on my computer. You can't do this if you only have Adobe Reader, which is the free version of Adobe. So now this is where the XPS format would come into play. Because if you don't have the Adobe PDF premium program like I do, you won't have that Adobe printer present when you want to print your file. So you always have the choice in the PC world. I'm not sure if you have that choice in the Mac world, although you probably have a similar choice uh, to print in the XPS format. And what that does is it, it brings the file into an electronic format that can be viewed on, I believe, just about any computer. The same way as a PDF file can be viewed. The other option would be to simply save your document as a PDF file. And many software programs, if not all of them now, have that option. And there's a distinct difference, and I'll tell you what that is. 
So if I save my document as a PDF form, it's going to save the entire document. Now, if I don't want to save the entire document, let's say I have an ebook that's, you know, 100 pages long and I only want the first chapter, now I can print the first chapter. And the way you do that is if you see on the lower left-hand corner, you have the option of a page range. So you you would click that that dot there and you would choose pages 1 through 15 or pages 15 through 30 whatever you want to print and and it'll save those specific documents. Now this is an example of how I save my my files. Now for this example this is a client tax form and I have a specific like I said what you need is you need a specific naming convention and it's you have to turn it into a procedure remember this is a bookkeeping system this is part of your books and records and everything in bookkeeping really comes down to having a procedure so the way I name my tax forms is the first part of it is the client. The second part is what tax form I'm saving and the third part is what tax period. So in this example this would be my client XYZ Corp. I put a dot in there to separate it from 1120S for 2014. And that equals like I said XYZ Corp. what form it is and what tax year. It's logical. The second example is John Jones's 1040 return for 2013. This is not a tax form. This is ABC Inc. accounts payable and for what time period. So you see AP in my system denotes accounts payable. AR would be accounts receivable. BS would be balance sheet. IS would be income statement and so on. Now I have two cloud software programs that I use. One is called Dropbox and the other one is Google Drive. Now both have free versions and if you go over a certain file capacity, for instance like Dropbox, I pay I, I think $180 a year, which is pretty inexpensive. So I use Dropbox and Google Drive and there's a reason for that. And the reason being that when I started my paperless file system, Dropbox saved just about every file format, while Google didn't. And now I've been slowly converting everything over to Google Drive because the, now Google Drive does save every kind of file format. I can save videos, PDFs, it's not just documents. It used to be called Google Docs. Uh, but now it's called Google Drive, and that's what I use. Now, the procedure for doing this is like any other document that you're going to print. You're going to have your, your file open to be printed. You're going to go to the print dialog box, and you can see over here my default printer is Brother. And what happens is I change it, and I change it to save it as a PDF file. It's as simple as that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it to my Dropbox folder. So you could see the Dropbox really just becomes an extension of my file system. Pretty easy. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name it. So again, my logical naming convention is if it has to do with bedrock, I'm going to call it bedrock. Guide to gaining control of your books and records is the name of this document. So you know that when I originally saved it, I saved it as that name. You know, my file system is consistent doesn't matter if I'm saving it as a document, as a spreadsheet, or as a PDF file. It's consistent. And that allows me to be able to find 
any document within an instant. I'm going to tell you a quick true story. I had a client. His name was Mike. Mike owned a pretty sizable trucking company. And in the trucking industry, there's a lot of paper. And Mike, at the time, this was about 14 years ago, so scanning machines weren't as inexpensive as they are today. But Mike always bought the biggest, latest, and greatest, and he probably spent two or three thousand dollars on this high-speed scanner and what he did was he proceeded to scan every document that he had and then shredded it and I was mystified when he kept calling me to request tax returns and financial statements that I had already given him because I had seen him scan them and I also saw him shred them so, but what I didn't do is, well, I didn't pay attention to what his procedure was. And lo and behold, when I asked him why he kept calling me, I said, because you already have it in your, your scanning system. Wouldn't it be quicker if you just printed it out from there? And he said he would, but he couldn't find it. <laughs> so what Mike had done was he allowed the factory settings to name his file so if you ever got a scanner you'll know that they come up with their crazy machine language naming convention which has absolutely no rhyme or reason other than the fact that that's how they do it and they don't care about our file system so mike was stuck with literally probably hundreds of thousands of documents that he had no chance of ever finding. That is not a good naming convention. <laughs> so when you come up with your naming convention, make it simple, make it something that people will understand, and make it so that when we get to the point, I'm going to show you how simple it is for me to find my documents. So identify what it is. The next step is, now, if I have a document that isn't like a financial statement or a tax return, but it's for a specific date, let's say it's an invoice, I'm going to name it, I'm going to put the date as part of that name extension. So, with my ebook, this is how it becomes named. It's bedrock, so anytime I want to find a bedrock file, I can find one. Guide to Gaining Control of Your Books and Records is the name of the file, and this is the date. So you can imagine if I update this ebook on August 21st, I'm going to rename it. Now, this gives me a shot at finding the latest version of my book. Sometimes that's important. So now, this is a way that I would find a file on my Google Drive. I would simply open up the drive and it becomes a search just like any other search in Google. I just type in bedrock. Now you didn't see this but this literally took about three seconds. In fact while I was typing in bedrock these documents came up and it's a, it's comes in as a list anywhere you want to look at it. I could also search it by just docs, by presentations by spreadsheets but that's how that works and it's the same thing with Dropbox same system it becomes a, a remote in the cloud file system and it's as simple as that that is an awesome paperless file system and I'll tell you if you're wondering why I call it awesome this paperless file system is efficient it's inexpensive practically free and any time you can have a system that reduces, compresses time, you're on the right track. We can't create time. We can only save time. We can only cr compress it. And in business, especially small businesses, time is money. You've heard that saying, time is money. So that concludes Chapter 6. We're halfway through the course. We got six. We have six more chapters to go, and that is it. Joe DiCara, over and out. See you in the next chapter. Thank you. 
And that wraps up another awesome episode of Bedrock Bookkeepers Online Academy. Joe DeCherry here inviting you back to our site, bedrockbookkeeping.com. Check us out for the latest and greatest offers, discounts, updates and content, videos, new courses. Okay, again, bedrockbookkeeping.com. Joe DeCherry, over and out. Looking forward to seeing you at the next segment.